Hey, so um, we're here in Vancouver on the Dandelion Thief. What you should know is that there is now an injunction against us. The enforcement provisions come into effect 2 p.m. Monday. Um, will there be a wake-up call? Will they show up at 7 a.m. on Tuesday morning? Um, you know, tell them to get out of their tents in the morning, everyone wake up. Um, will they actually move in at 2 p.m. on um, on Monday? Or will they wait until like the middle of the night like they've done in, in other cities across the country? Um, you know, and just sort of do a black ops kind of thing and just, you know, bust people up. My, my suspicion of what they'll do, and I don't mind, you know, spilling the beans that I figured out the cops' plan, because hopefully it means they won't do it, um, is that they won't enforce the injunction. They'll wait until, you know, um, maybe like Friday night or something like that when there's a few partiers around, and then they'll wait until they can get someone unruly on the site and they can just bust them up and make a make a scene, essentially. Um, so that's one of the things that we really have to stress. Is we really have to have like, no booze and no alcohol. Um, no, booze and, no booze and no alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> double the pain. That's really important. We need to make sure that, that you know, if the police do move in, that everyone's, you know, got all the wits about them because it's some it's a sort of situation that, you know you know you need to be clear headed for. So keep that in mind, occupiers. The most ridiculous thing is that the uh, the city uh, got it, like twice as much time to produce their arguments. Occupy Vancouver, we got like one day, the city got two days, and you know all the people who went to the court hearing get five minutes each to talk. So of course now um, the injunction has passed. Occupy, Occupy Vancouver has been forced to leave. Um, and we're going to be out on our out, out on our asses uh, by Monday at uh, uh, Monday at 2 p.m. Although of course you know we know that the police aren't actually going to move on Monday at 2 p.m. That would be that would be too simple. Um, basically, what it came down to in the in the hearing was the balance of inconvenience. So you probably remember in the news how all the fire people are here. Actually, the fire trucks are still here, um, and they've been telling people to like you know clean up their shit. Otherwise, there's going to be a, you know fire hazard and stuff like that. Um, and they've been telling us that we're, they're going to you know be going after us for health and safety stuff, doing all these inspections and spending a lot of money. Um, and that's been part of the you know the PR campaign against us has been that we're really spending so much money. What it came down to was was inconvenience. So not a safety hazard, just that it's a problem for us to be here. Um, and mainly that you know there's people who want to use the space. It's basically explicitly comes down to the timing. And it's really weird that you know sports always comes before politics in this province. Um, you know you can imagine if uh, even even during the Olympics in London, um, if they'd shut down like Hyde Park, Speaker's Corner and Hyde Park for you know the Olympics. They've been having that for a hundred years. We just had ours get started, and you know they're already trying to shut it down. I mean, the Grey Cup people have actually said they don't mind us being here. It's just the city that's decided, you know, that they want they want the Grey Cup people to use the space. Kind of weird. Um, see, that ties in really nicely with my idea that I had earlier, um, which is where we should move. You know, because there is a possibility that we will have to get kicked out. We have talked about it, although we haven't really explicitly like decided where we're going to go. My idea, though, and get this, is we should go to Rogers Arena because I think the city, you know, they've, they've said they want to give us a structure. They said they want to keep this going. You know, if they're serious about this, they just spent like I don't know, seven hundred million dollars on this new roof. Um, that would be a really great place for us. It's in the public eye. You know, it's part of the public vision. What better use for a stadium like that? It could serve a political function. It could serve an actually useful function. Um, so uh, we should uh, we should be talking to people, uh, people about that. Um, another maybe Stanley Park. That would be nice. They had an art, art movement uh, there in the '80s for Expo. They set up this really nice space there. Um, they got everything all polished up and nice. And then the Parks Board bulldozed it. Um, so it kind of be a nice shadow to that. And that's one thing I think this movement needs is a lot more art. So those are two possibilities. Um, I do like this space a lot, though. Um, the art gallery is really good. Um, partly because I think this this movement is is an art piece itself. You know, like we're in the. That's why it's such an important important movement because we're actually changing the cultural the cultural norm. We're cultural cultural creators. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for listening. You media people are really good looking, so you should definitely air this. And um, talk to you later. Cheers.